Welcome to the Michigan Association for College Admission Counseling's Virtual College Fair. Thank you very much for joining us today. Before we get started with our presentations, just a few quick housekeeping items to go over. The first is that attendees are welcome and certainly encouraged to ask questions to any of the panelists at any time utilizing the Q&A button. You can pose your question to a specific panelist, or you can ask a general question to any and all the panelists. Also, just a reminder that your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you. And about one week from today, a recording of this session will be available at the strivescan.com slash Michigan website. Without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and turn it over to our panelists. And up first, we're going to hear from Sacred Heart University. Thanks, Christopher. Good evening, everybody. My name is Sarah Koloski. I'm the Regional Director of Admissions for Sacred Heart University. I'm based in Denver, Colorado, and I will be your direct point of contact moving forward should you find Sacred Heart on your list. Uh, so Sacred Heart is a mid-sized Catholic university. We're located in Fairfield, Connecticut. We're just an hour and a half outside of New York City and about two and a half hours to Boston. Um, located in this really quintessential New England college town, we share the town with Fairfield University. Um, we get the four seasons. We're 20 minutes away from the beach and um, not too far away from sort of balancing with that urban lifestyle as well. Um, we're also located in the third most concentrated area of Fortune 500 companies. So um, all of our majors do require at least one internship to graduate. Um, so those are readily available in our area as well. We're sort of a hybrid of liberal arts meets career education. So while most students do come in undecided, we know that a lot of programs do require some aspect of higher learning or a postgraduate study. Um, our most popular majors include direct entry nursing. We have a six year accelerated doctorate of physical therapy. We're one of very few schools that offers that accelerated track. Um, we also offer occupational therapy and athletic training at the master's level. Um, but we also brought in a lot of different areas too. We're um, top 5% of internationally accredited business schools. Um, we have uh, top 20 in the country for performing arts. We're also expanding in areas such as like engineering, um, the social sciences and such. Um, but of which 40 of, our, 40 of our undergraduate programs have an accelerated or combined graduate program associated with them. We're probably seeing about 40% of our student body come back to take advantage of this opportunity just because they do get priority consideration in the process and pending their academic success, um, you could be awarded an assistantship for those master's years. So paying it forward um, and really thinking about your five and six year plan. We are a Catholic university, but we did become early, uh, independent from the church early after our founding. We wanted to have this autonomy with the curriculum. And I would say um, kind of our biggest dedication within the faith is our commitment to community service. Um, we do have a hundred different clubs and activities ranging from division one athletics, um, performing arts, um, social clubs, but um, Habitat for Humanity is our largest student run club. So I think it is just the testament to our um, campus community and what they wanna get involved in, in really emphasize that global citizenship. Uh, Sacred Heart's in a really pivotal growth phase right now. We're one of the top 10 fastest growing Catholic institutions in the country, um, really broadening both in the physical sense and as well as our offerings. Um, as I mentioned, we do have high accolades with in our health profession programs. We are top in state and top five in New England for all of our um, health profession programs, such as nursing, PT, OT, and AT. We've added new majors this year, including um, speech language pathology, social work, and public health. So um, we're wanting to offer a myriad of opportunities for students as they're still trying to figure out what exactly they may want to get involved in um, within that setting. Um, we're also growing in other areas, as I mentioned, our performing arts, we have 28 different performing arts programs. Um, with that direct connection to Broadway. So if um, students are looking to get involved and want um, more of that performance aspect, that's readily available on campus as well. Um, but in the last seven years, we've had 14 new buildings introduced to campus, including um, expansion within dormitories, dining options, uh, different academic buildings. One of the things I do like to highlight is um, the top middle picture here, which is um, the former headquarters for General Electric. This is now our West Campus and home to um, all of our engineering sciences and our business school. Um, great opportunity, especially if I have an undecided engineer and you're, you're not wanting to consider an impacted track. Um, this allows you to take advantage of an 11,000 square foot makerspace, artificial intelligence labs, game design labs, drones labs, um, the former um, 
uh, head research scientist at Yale University is now the director of engineering at our um, on, on our program. So it's still growing. So it's a great time to come in to get that really personalized class setting. Um, our student faculty ratio is about 13 to one while we are uh, university of about 5,400. So um, really balancing the needs for students and also engaging in those high spirited opportunities. Um, uh, one thing I did wanna mention that's not listed on here just because it is hot off the press. Um, we are breaking ground on our uh, Martiri family ice hockey arena, which is going to further growth in our ice hockey programs, figure skating, synchronized skating um, programs. So if students are interested in any of those opportunities that will be set to be complete in 2023 um, and does offer free ice time for students who are interested. And finally, I just wanted to go over our application process. Um, students who do apply are very self-selecting. Uh, we just ask for the common application, high school transcript and letter of recommendation. Um, one deadline that is really important to note is if you are considering the College of Nursing, you must apply by December 15th. Um, and in any case, though, if you apply for any of our deadlines, all students are automatically considered for merit scholarships. We are test optional for all of our programs, including nursing. Um, if you find yourselves in the ranges listed on this page, feel free to send them. But if you don't want to be considered, it's not something that would be penalizing. Um, if you want to offer a more personalized piece to your application, um, you can reach out to me for an interview. Um, or if you would like the opportunity to visit campus, um, we are currently open for limited in person visits. Um, but thank you so much for your time. I really look forward to working with you. And I'm now going to pass it off to the next presenter. Thank you very much, Sacred Heart. Um, up next, we're going to hear from the University of Connecticut. All right. Thanks, everyone. My name is Maddie, and I'm an admissions rep at UConn. So a little bit about our campus. There it is. A little bit about our campus. We were founded in 1881 as an agriculture school. Now, over 130 years later, you can still see those agriculture roots on campus, but we've grown to be so much more than that. We're a little flip-flopped with Sacred Heart. We're 90 minutes from Boston and two and a half hours from New York City. So very close to some major cities. Our main campus is Stores. It's in the upper Northeast quadrant of Connecticut. And most of our out-of-state students do go to our Stores campus. There's about 19,000 undergraduate students on our Stores campus, but we do have several other campuses throughout the state of Connecticut. And in our entire Yukon system, there's about 24,000 students. When it comes to academics, we offer over 115 majors and over 320 minors across 10 different schools and colleges, which can sound like a lot and no worries about that. About a quarter of our incoming first year students are undecided, so they'll be admitted into our ACES or Academic Center for Exploratory Students program, where they meet with various advisors, help them figure out what they want to study. When it comes to some of the fun things we offer on campus, we have a lot. We are very well known for our men's and women's basketball teams. We do have 24 division one athletic teams with 23 national championships across the board. I believe it's actually 24 now. Our, our uh, women's field hockey team just won another championship, but all students do get free tickets to all of our athletic games, which is pretty cool. We also have over 700 student clubs and organizations that can range from Greek life to pre-professional societies to some clubs you may have seen in high school like Mock Trial, Model UN. We also have some fun clubs like the Moon Watching Club, the Snowman Building Club, the Cannoli Club, and so much more. UConn is also very dedicated to diversity and inclusion on campus and that can be seen through our five cultural centers. Switching gears to talk a little bit about the application process. We do not have early action or early decision, but we have a priority deadline of December 1st, and that's for priority consideration for merit scholarships and the honors program. There's no separate application for any of our scholarships or the honors program. Every student will be automatically considered. And then that December 1st deadline is also for our special programs in law, medicine, dental medicine, and education. They are an assurance program. So if you know you definitely want to go to med school and you're accepted into our special program in medicine, then you are assured that you have a spot in UConn School of Medicine after your time as an undergrad. Our regular on-time stores deadline is January 15th. So as long as you submit all of your materials by then, you'll hear back from us on March 1st. And if you're interested in applying to any of our regional campuses, the deadline for that is May 1st. When you're ready to apply, you can find us on the Common App and the Coalition App. We don't have a preference. 
We do require official transcripts and a personal essay. We strongly encourage you, you to submit two letters of recommendation, though they are optional. And we are test optional for the next two years. And we truly do mean test optional. You will not be at a disadvantage if you choose not to submit your test scores. We like to say that if your test scores are an accurate reflection of what you're capable of academically, then it'd be a good idea to submit them. But if you know that you can perform much better academically than what your test scores reflect, then maybe don't submit them and that's totally okay. And then we also have an application fee of $80. So here's just some ways to stay connected with us. We're hoping that by this summer, we can open up campus to in-person tours. But in the meantime, you can take a virtual tour. You can also chat one-on-one -on -one with an admissions rep and you can chat one-on-one -on -one with a current UConn student. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much, UConn. Um, now we're gonna move to uh, Davenport University. Awesome, thank you so much. Pull up my presentation. My name is uh, Cassidy Baker and I am an admissions rep for Davenport University. I'm super excited to be able to talk to you today um, and just share a little bit about DU. So if you want more info um, after this session, that sign in link is right in the bottom and if you fill it out, I'll send you some more info and I'll send you some free swag just for watching. Um, but a little bit about Davenport in general. We have 14 locations around Michigan. Our main campus is our Grand Rapids, Michigan campus. We have uh, resident living there, our business building, and our main academic building. Along with, uh, we have nursing programs at five of these different locations. In Davenport, we're known for our business, uh, technology, and healthcare professions. So uh, we really want to be able to help you, and we want you to be able to have a vibrant, exciting campus life when you're here at Davenport as well. Uh, another thing to note when you apply to Davenport is you will automatically be given a scholarship. So we have merit-based scholarships that you see on that screen there, and those are automatically given to you based on your GPA. So if you have, let's say, a 3.5 GPA or higher, you will automatically get that $8,000 excellent scholarship for four years as a student. Uh, but no worries, no matter what, you will for sure get at least our signature scholarship of $5,000 for four years. We also have a lot of different scholarship opportunities. Some that I wanna highlight are competitive scholarships, which are full tuition, full room and board and study abroad scholarships. Um, we have the Joan Ardford Memorial Scholarship, which is an essay and uh, then application base and along with some letter of recommendations. And then we have those bottom two that do not have the letter of recommendations or um, an SAT requirement for that board. We do have the SAT requirement for those bottom two do not. So I highly encourage you to connect with your admissions rep when you apply and they can help you along with that application process. Like I said, here at Davenport, we specialize within the College of Business, Technology, and Health. We also have the College of Arts and Sciences and Urban Education. So within our College of Business, we have various programs from business, international business, marketing, and sports management, all of that. Technology, we've been federally recognized as a um, great technology school. We've been given many grants and scholarship opportunities for a lot of our technology students to have full ride scholarships. And our College of Health, we have um, kind of that hands-on and hands-off side of healthcare, along with a direct admit from high school nursing program. Uh, and your admissions rep, which works with you personally, would be able to help you with that admissions process. Uh, it's uh, GPA, SAT, and essay-based. Uh, and then our arts and sciences, we have our pre-med program and our social work program. Um, and that pre-med program sets you up for med school and helps you uh, get those connections too. Uh, at Davenport, we are a liberal arts, we are not a liberal arts college. So what that means is that we don't really have gen eds. We want you to be able to focus all your time here at Davenport in what you're actually interested in studying. Gen Eds are great, but it's kind of what high school is for. So we want you to be able to spend your time and money in what you're interested in. So if you're nursing, all four years are gonna be healthcare nursing classes. Um, 
So we really make sure that all those four years are really career focused and giving you an edge up on that resume. Uh, we have a 30 student max class size. And honestly, 30 students is kind of big. Uh, it's gonna be in your mid twenties for your biggest class. And our healthcare labs and pre-med labs are about the 15 to 20 range. We also have employment guarantees attached to some of our some of our programs, including accounting, nursing, cyber defense, network project management, um, network security, and computer information systems, meaning that we promise that you will have a job with a new degree field within the first six months after graduation, or else we will help pay for further education. We've never had to use it. All of our students always find it. However, it's kind of a nice cushion to have, too. So those are our undergraduate programs. If you're interested in applying, our application is completely and always free. So go ahead and check us out. Um, our fall 2022 applications open. So you can go ahead and apply and you'll get connected with your personal admissions rep from there. Uh, your admissions rep will work with you one on one the whole entire process. So from transcripts, SATs, all that to next steps. Um, then you're going to want to send in your ACT or SAT score. And then also starting October 1, no matter what college or university you go to of your senior year, I highly encourage you to fill out your FAFSA because then uh, your college and university can really help you uh, pinpoint of how much it's going to cost and help you with all those next steps as well. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I'll put it in the chat. Super great uh, talking to you guys today. Thank you for attending. Thank you very much, Davenport. Um, up next, we're going to hear from Schoolcraft College. Good evening. Thank you guys so much for attending tonight. My name is Sharnay Malden, and I am the admissions representative at Schoolcraft College. So let's get started and talk a little bit about what we offer. So here at Schoolcraft, we do have open enrollment. There is no minimum GPA or test scores to be admitted. We welcome everyone. We have four different locations. So our main campus is located in Livonia. Um, at this campus, students will be able to take their general ed classes as well as meet with admissions or academic advising. We also have a manufacturing and engineering center. This is for students who are interested in doing trades, such as welding or plastic. We also have uh, the public safety complex, which is for students who are interested in our criminal justice program or a fire technology program. And then we have another city, another um, location, which is Ratcliffe Center, and that is located in Garden City, Michigan. We have been voted the number one community college in Michigan for return on investment. So rest assured that when you leave here, you will be well prepared for your future. We also have four, di four different traditional class formatting. So we have your traditional class formatting where you'll meet in person. Then we also offer the online formatting, which is a little more flexible for students. There's no scheduled day and time that you'll meet. Um, however, you do want to make sure that you pay attention to the syllabus so you can turn your assignments in on time. We also offer remote learning format in which there is a scheduled day and time that you meet. However, those sessions will be held remotely via live web conferencing tool, kind of similar to how we are now. We also have the hybrid learning format in which part of the class will be held remotely and then the other part of the class will be held in person. So that is for trades such as if you're interested in nursing or things of that nature. Um, some of those classes will be held in the hybrid formatting. We also offer over 200 online classes in 33 disciplines, and we have over 130 academic programs as well as transfer degree options set in place. Um, so if that is something that you are interested in doing, we do have that set into place. So here at Schoolcraft, we have a very vibrant and exciting campus life. We understand that there is more to the college experience than what takes place in the cast. Therefore, we offer many opportunities for students to get involved. We have a performance art program as well as student run clubs and organizations. And one of the biggest benefits about our student run clubs, if you see a club that you don't like, you can always create your own club. That looks really good on your resume. Um, and it's an opportunity for you to bring a little bit of yourself to the campus. We also have sports. For the women's sports, we have basketball, softball, and volleyball. And then for the men's sports, we do offer baseball, basketball, golf, and soccer. 
So we offer, offer specialized programs to prepare you for your career. We offer skill certificates all the way to associate's degrees, as well as having um, transfer agreements set into place. So with our skill certificates, on an average, you're going to take about five to six courses, which is a minimum of 16 credit hours. And then with the certificate, there's an average 10 to 12 courses, which is 30 credit hours. Um, and then for the associates, that's going to be average of 20 to 22 courses, around 60 credit hours minimum to complete that program. So we do have the, we are part of the Michigan Transfer Agreement. And basically that is an agreement between all the colleges and universities within the state of Michigan where they'll accept your lower level general ed courses. So if you are thinking about transfer to a four year university, we do have options set into place. And all around this process, you'll have academic advisors who are here with you to make sure that you are taking those correct courses that will transfer over. And it will save you a lot of money by starting here at Schoolcraft College. Um, one of the biggest benefits of attending Schoolcraft College is the amount of money that you're going to save. As you can see, for residents, the average cost for um, attending here is going to be around $5,000. And then for non-residents, it's going to be around $6,000. So in comparison to the bigger universities, you can see that you're going to be saving a lot of money by starting here at Schoolcraft and getting your education journey here. Uh, we also recommend that students look for different ways to pay for college. So we do have scholarships set into place. We recommend that students fill out scholarships. It's easy. Our scholarship process is simple as easy. Um, and once you complete the scholarship application, we'll recommend scholarships to you based off of your profile. So you just have to complete that general application, and then you will be recommended for a scholarship based off of that profile. We do have student employment as another way for students to help pay for college, and then then we do have the FAFSA. Um, we recommend that students complete the FAFSA. It allows us to know your financial situation, and then we can get you in contact to see what type of loans or grants that you qualify for. So some of the scholarships that we do offer, we have the Schoolcraft College Student Ambassador, in which students will get $500 in the fall and then another $500 in the winter. Um, there's a required GPA of a 3.0. Uh, and then for the trustee scholarship, you'll get $1,000 in the fall and then another $1,000 in the winter. Generally, there is a um, SAT and ACT requirement. For the SAT, it's a 940 or higher. And then for the ACT, it's an 18 or higher. We do also have another scholarship opportunity, which is the Scholars Honor Program, in which students will get $2,400 over two years. And that is designed for students who are a little more academically motivated um, with enhanced education experience. So here at Schoolcraft, we are very serious about our academics, and that is because it's our job to prepare you for your future. We want to make sure that you are prepared for your next level. So with that being said, we do have plenty of support in place. We have our learning center as well as our career center and then the disability support services for students who need assistance with that. Um, and the steps to becoming a student here at Schoolcraft is fairly simple. First, we will need you to apply for admissions and then submit your transcripts and test scores, um, explore financial aid, complete new student orientation, and then meet with an academic advisor and you're all set to register for classes. Thank you so much for attending. I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to the next presenter. Thank you very much, Schoolcraft. Um, and the next presenter comes from Hofstra University. Thank you for having me. Hey, everyone. My name is Daniel. I'm the Regional Admission Counselor here at Hofstra University. Um, so it's nice to virtually meet you all um, when uh, it's time for you guys to submit your applications to Hofstra. You can say that you met me virtually. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. Okay, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about what makes Hofstra special um, and why students choose to uh, attend uh, Hofstra University. We are in New York City. Um, pardon me, we are in New York, about 25 miles outside of New York City. We're actually on Long Island. So if you're looking for a university that has access to uh, incredible beaches and um, an amazing city, uh, Hofstra should be your first choice, I hope. Um, we are outside of New York City, which allows us to uh, kind of have a suburban campus um, away from the hustle and bustle of it all, but it's about 45 minutes away so students can uh, easily get access to the trains and, and get to the city for their internships, which they do pretty regularly. 
we're about a medium sized school, uh, about 6,000 undergraduate students. We offer over 160 different programs, which we'll look at them a little bit later in the next slide. Um, our classroom sizes are pretty small, kind of akin to your uh, current high school classroom sizes, about 21 students with a 13 to one student to faculty ratio. At Hofstra, we focus on experiential learning because we want to make sure that when you graduate, you can put on your resume, um, you know, uh, experiences that you have, uh, you can say that you did something, you saw something, you experienced it, you lived it. Um, we want to make sure that you walk away with that. Um, and so uh, having a small class sizes allows us to, to give students the attention that they need, um, but also being uh, where we are and, and the sort of university that we are, we are able to offer resources um, that a larger school can offer, um, but with the size, like I said, of a smaller school. Uh, so at Hofstra, these are all of our majors here. If you wanna see a complete list, you can go to hofstra.edu slash majors. Um, but at Hofstra, we like to say that if once you're accepted into the university, you're welcome to study any of our programs. Um, it can be confusing at first to think, okay, well, do I have to apply to the School of Communications? Do I apply to the business school? Do I apply to the psychology uh, program? But uh, at Hofstra, you know, whether you want to come in undecided or know what your major is, um, we have a ton of options and can be flexible to make sure that you are learning what it is that you want to learn. Um, we've got students who will double major and triple minor and, and do all sorts of uh, things with their curriculum uh, because we encourage that. We want to make sure that you're having a, a breadth of, of knowledge no matter what you choose to study. Um, Hofstra is a D1 school, so if you are interested in playing sports, uh, we compete at the Division I level. Um, we also have intramural sports that correspond with each of the D1 sports. So. Uh, you don't have to uh, compete at that level if, if you're not interested in that. Uh, but we have uh, tons of different uh, clubs and sports and, and things that students can, can take part of at Hofstra. Um, over 220 student-led clubs, to be exact, um, uh, ranging from pre-professional uh, clubs, uh, sororities, fraternities, um, identity-based groups, and things like that. Um, so if there's something that you're interested in, especially if you're already doing it in high school, chances are we have a club that you can join and take part of at Hofstra. Um, housing is guaranteed for all four years. Uh, so, you know, uh, you don't have to worry about um, switching rooms. Uh, if you, you know, don't have, uh, if you're at odds with your roommate or something like that happens, we can swap you out to another room within 48 hours. If you choose to commute your first year, live at home, you know, live with some family on Long Island and then uh, choose to dorm on campus your next year, that's totally fine too. Uh, we can accommodate that. Uh, students are able to have, uh, a car on campus for all four years for free. Um, you just need to get a tag at the student center, uh, uh, public safety rather. Um, uh, take a minute to take a look at uh, some of these photos here. These are our little uh, picture of our res halls. Um, about 82% of our students choose to make Hofstra home after their first year uh, because uh, they are so well acclimated in our community, but also because the dorms are so comfortable. Um, and spacious, and it's just an easy place to live um, and study for sure. About 71% of our students complete internships at Hofstra. It's a very normal thing to secure an internship. Uh, you can get one through your professor, your uh, career advisor, the career center, um, or maybe there's a student that is completing an internship and they just wanna pass it along to you to let you know that that opportunity is available. Um, that's the sort of community building that we have here at Hofstra. We understand that, you know, students want to study, they go to college to study what it is that they're interested in, but also because they're getting ready to enter the workforce. So uh, our focus uh, at Hofstra is to make sure that we're putting you in front of companies and organizations that are going to give you that experience that's going to be useful for the rest of your career. Um, our Career Center is top-notch. I can't say uh, enough about the Career Center. Um, they do an incredible job to uh, uh, put on job fairs, connect uh, students to alumni and to our network to make sure that they are either attending grad school or fully employed by the time they graduate. Um, about 60% of our students are accepting job offers before graduation, which is you know, incredible. It's a, a feat that we're proud of for sure. Um, uh, another thing to note about the Career Center is that it's available to students even after you graduate. So in the event that you graduate from Hofstra, you get your dream job and six months into it, you find out you're not a, a fan of your boss or something's not working, you can always call the Career Center um, and they will help you out, they'll have your back, okay? 
Um, Hofstra is a test optional school. We've been test optional for a while. Um, so if you weren't able to take an SAT or ACT, um, you're welcome to apply, no problems at all. Here are our ranges if you are eligible or able to take one of those tests. Um, we admit about uh, an average of a 3.7 in terms of GPA. Um, so that's like your, your high, high 80s and 90s. Um, but we obviously have folks who fall above and below those ranges. So if you're, so if you're outside of that range and you're nervous, but you love Hofstra, you can reach out to me. I am your admission counselor. Um, I, the more that I know about your academic history, the better I can vouch for you and, and be in your corner in terms of your uh, application process. Uh, we have early action, which is non-binding. That's November 15th and December 15th. Um, uh, thank you. I don't want to take too much time. <laughs> thank you very much, Hofstra. Um, and our final presentation this evening comes from uh, Xavier University. Excellent. Let me go ahead and share my screen. All right, everyone. So my name is Dallas Stokes, and I am one of the admission counselors with Xavier University. Um, for those of you that do not know, Xavier University is a Catholic Jesuit university um, institution. Um, oops, sorry about that. Again, Xavier University is a Catholic Jesuit institution located right in the heart of downtown Cincinnati area. Um, our metro area has around 2 million total people. So we definitely use the extension of the city, not only academically, socially, and culturally, but professionally as well. So with our 190 acre park-like campus, um, Again, we're only five to 10 minutes from downtown. Uh, we house probably around 5,000, just under 5,000 undergraduate students, which makes us a medium-sized school, but we're on the smaller end of that medium-sized school scale, right? So one thing that we benefit from is the 12 to one student faculty ratio. I can tell you from my own personal experience that I absolutely loved uh, a lot of my professors. I was able to build a lot of great relationships with a lot of my professors, had Thanksgiving dinner with professors at times. Um, I've had uh, the opportunity to babysit to make some extra cash with professors. Uh, so again, you, you will create a, a amazing relationships. A lot of your class sizes won't be more than 20 students um, at all. And so that is something to keep in mind. Your professors will definitely know you. So it is in your interest and your best interest to get to know them uh, as well. So with the uh, student body being around 5,000 or so, we do offer 90 plus majors and minors. A lot of those minors uh, our majors and minors have concentrations within them. Uh, for example, I was international studies while I was at Xavier and there are five distinct concentrations amongst that program. And so keep that in mind, whatever major that you are probably intending to get into, it will definitely have other concentrations or focus points uh, that you can sort of attack from there. Um, with that being said, our 90 plus majors and minors are part of the College of Arts and Sciences, the Williams College of Business, the College of Professional Sciences, and of course, course, our newest college, the College of Nursing, which is a direct admitted program at Xavier University, okay? Uh, one thing I do like to point out here is our 98% success rate. And what that basically means is that 98% of our students are doing one of three things um, after graduation, within six months of graduation, in fact. They're either working full-time, they're in some form of higher education, oftentimes a master's or a doctor program, or they're doing some form of service, oftentimes military, as we have a large um, ROTC and um, veterans program here. Um, one reason that we do have such a high success rate is because every student that gets admitted gets a six person success team down at the very uh, bottom right hand corner you see four of those six members, uh, the academic advisor of course the advisor that just goes over the basics, uh, what it takes to graduate within four years. Um, uh, if you're doing any transfer credits over the summer and you want to take some classes back at home and bring them back to Xavier, they will help you with that. If you ever do study abroad, they will help you with that as well. Uh, your success coaches are here just to make sure that your everyday life is going okay, make sure your dorm life is going okay, that make sure that you're making friends, um, your classes are going well, that sort of thing. A financial aid counselor, of course, self-explanatory, they're going to help with all the money side of things, right? They're going to help you uh, find additional loans if need be. They'll help you find additional scholarships. Okay. Lastly, the career coaches. The career coaches to me are why Xavier University has such high success at the end of the day. Um, Xavier University, the, the career coaches take care of the small nitty gritty stuff. They help with um, 
cover letter building, uh, resume building, uh, phone interviews, mock interviews, appropriate attire to wear for the interviews, right? And so again, they are instrumental to a lot of our success at Xavier University. So as we have here, the application process, um, one thing or a couple things I do like to point out, Xavier University is rolling decision, okay? Rolling admission and rolling decision. So um, the, you can essentially apply whenever. We do have a decision, uh, December 1st deadline. So if you're applying for honors, competitive scholarships, or um, the nursing program, you do want to keep that in mind. You will want to apply before December 1st. Also, if you apply outside of those programs um, and submit your FAFSA before December 1st, you will be eligible for an additional $500 um, that will be renewable every year. Uh, as you can see, every student that gets admitted gets a scholarship between $16,000 and $24,000 a year, and additional grants and other scholarships may come after after that. Um, also, we are test optional. So if you don't fall in any of these categories that you see here, those are mostly the honors or the nursing, you can apply without your test scores. One thing when looking at application we like to employ is something that uh, is called holistic review. So not only are we looking at your transcripts and, and, and your test scores if you send them in, but we're looking at essays, letter of recommendations, that sort of thing. Uh, to me, your essay says the most about you. It says a lot about your character. So I always encourage students to really take time to really put effort into the those essays. Uh, just because they are meaningful and there are us uh, as admission counselors on the other end reading them. Okay. Lastly, I do like to point out, um, as I mentioned earlier, we are a Catholic Jesuit institution, which means we are men and women for and with others, right? So uh, volunteering is huge on campus. 90,000 hours were recorded the year before the COVID pandemic. Another thing I like to mention, one in three students typically study abroad. I was one of those one in three by far my best year, uh, most favorite year, I should say, at Xavier University. Um, even though we are on the smaller end of the medium-sized scale, we do have big size feel, 18 uh, Division I teams, including uh, our big bad basketball team that plays in the Big East alongside UConn um, and the rest of the gang. And then we have 170 different clubs to offer. Okay, so that is a lot to choose from. Here is my contact information. If you guys need anything at all, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Xavier. And thank you to all of our panelists for your great presentations. We do have some time remaining. Um, so why don't we do a round or two of questions here ourselves while we wait to see if the attendees have any additional questions. Uh, the first question I would pose to you is, um, what's one thing you did not have time to include in your presentation that you'd like to cover now? Perhaps that's your favorite event or tradition on campus, a fun fact about your school, uh, et cetera. So why don't we go in that same order, starting with Sacred Heart. Thanks. Yeah, one thing I would highlight, um, study abroad is a really big component of our um, experience here at Sacred Heart. We actually do offer um, study abroad opportunities on two of our international campuses, especially students who are considering um, any health profession tracks, pre-med, nursing. Um, we actually have a hospital on our Ireland campus and students have the opportunity to study abroad for a full semester, where oftentimes that's not something that it seems likely or is possible. We want to make that process as uh, seamless and it's all Sacred Heart credit. So you get to have that global opportunity as well. Great, thank you. Yukon? So I had mentioned that Yukon originally started as an agriculture school and you can still see those roots on campus. What I mean by that is that we have a farm on campus with cows and horses and sheep. And we also have the best ice cream at our dairy bar that you'll ever have because it is made from the milk of our very own cows. Great, thank you. Davenport? Yeah, so I just want to highlight our residence uh, halls. So they're in two apartment style. You actually get your own bedroom that has a door and it locks. Um, and then you share a living room with three other students. And then you also have your own bathroom, an unlimited meal plan, along with AC, heat, Wi-Fi included, Wi-Fi and cable, which is all included. Um, so it's a lot more spacious, uh, really kind of a home away from home. Thank you. Schoolcraft? 
Hi, so one thing I didn't mention in my presentation is that I highly recommend students attend our campus tour. Right now we are hosting a virtual campus tour every Thursday from 3.30 to 5 p.m. Um, and it allows students to speak with an admissions rep as well as a student ambassador. And you'll get an introduction and an overview of our college and really get to ask those questions um, that you may have pertaining to, to attending school craft. Hofstra? Uh, one thing that I would share is that Hofstra has a long standing relationship with Northwell Health, which is one of the largest hospitals uh, on Long Island. Um, uh, they have been handling our COVID response. And so if a confident response to COVID is uh, important to you, then uh, I think you should definitely consider Hofstra. I talked a little bit about experiential learning and our uh, partnership with Northwell Health allows a lot of our med school students to uh, experience things that uh, they, a lot of other folks would have to wait until their senior year to try out. So. Um, definitely, if that's up your alley, consider Hofstra for sure. Okay, thank you. Xavier? Uh, of course, I'm definitely going to take it to the basketball. Um, every year we have the Crosstown Shootout with the University of Cincinnati. That's my favorite game, especially being from Cincinnati. Um, and so students camp out for that. Uh, the the Centos Arena is literally 30 seconds away from your dorm, so it's walking right outside of your dorm. It's one of the best things ever. So that's something I would definitely love to mention. Great, thank you. Um, and we have time for one more question. So I'm sure students would love to hear this from um, admissions professionals. What's one piece of advice you have for someone going through the college search process, whether that's uh, questions they should be asking, strategies they should be employing, et cetera. So go back in that same order. Yeah, mine is a little bit more of like logistics and kind of bookending at the beginning and end of the college process. Um, first is to just make a separate email specifically for um, all college communications. Um, it'll also lessen any headaches on your end and flooding your inbox with all of those materials. Um, and then the second piece of advice I would add to that as you're navigating the process, you see how much we're trying to humanize it um, and really personalize the place for you. So if you are no longer interested, just let us know. It's a simple unsubscribe, shoot us an email, we can withdraw your application. It just makes things uh, run a lot smoother. And then again, lessening that headache in that inbox for you. My piece of advice with everything being virtual, I'd say try to attend as many events as possible, learn about as many schools as possible. Cause I mean, even just with these ThriveScan events, I've learned about so many schools that I might not necessarily have known about prior. So try to go to as many things as you can. I would say just connect with your admissions rep. Where are the professional in our area of the college and so we want to help you no question is a stupid question and each student is their own person so we want to make it personalized and really help you with that so ask away um come visit campus all that I would say always invest in yourself. When you're deciding on a potential college, make sure that you choose a school that is invested in you. Um, make sure that they're invested in their students. Get to know the admissions rep, go on those campus tours, ask those questions that you have, and then make your decision based off what school seems like a best fit for you. Uh, I would say, um, you know, uh, it's okay not to have, uh, and I would even encourage you to not have a, a number one school or a top school, but kind of look at it as um, what are the resources that I'm going after, what's what's top of mind to me, what's more important to me, and have kind of your, your schools. But um, as you visit and as you learn more about schools and as you communicate with admission counselors, you'll get a different feel and a different experience that can kind of shape uh, where you choose to go in the end. And then I would say um, to try and think about it more or less as a four year investment, just because you want to feel comfortable at the end of the day. This is a big transition, a big step leaving high school, going to college. And so you want to feel the most comfortable, the most fit, the most like you can call this place home. Right. And so definitely just think about it in that regard, because it is going to be where, where you end up for those four years. And then um, you definitely want to be able to call it your, your home, your second home. Great, thank you very much. Um, thank you to all of our panels for your great presentations and your additional insights. Certainly thank you to attendees for joining us. Uh, we hope you gained some, um, uh, we hope you were intrigued by some of these presentations and that now 
uh, you're going to continue the conversations with these schools. So please do feel free to reach out, um, ask deeper questions, and learn more about these opportunities. Uh, before we do close out this session, just a few quick housekeeping items. First is that when you close this window, you will receive a very quick four question survey that we ask that you complete. And again, about one week from today, a recording of this session will be available on the strivescan.com slash Michigan website. But thank you again to everybody and to all the students out there. Good luck in your college search and enjoy the process. Have a good night.